Hey everybody, it's Teach It Tuesday, and I'm going to be doing a tutorial over the Lowland Kids Razorback, or Racerback, I don't know how you say that, but it's with a C, so I'm going to say Racerback, but I call it Razorback, from Arkansas, Razorbacks, I know it's not that, but you know, that's just how I say it. So it's the Razor, Razor, <laughs> Razorback Tank Hoodie, no, it's just called the Razorback Hoodie, my bad, but it is a tank. Um, and I'm going to be using a binding attachment on my cover stitch today. So I haven't done that yet in a video. I've used it um, myself, just I haven't covered it in a video. So I'm going to be using my um, Brother 22340, I guess that's how you say it, I don't know, 2340 cover stitch from Brother. And I'm going to be using the um, binding, the double fold binding attachment that comes, that you buy to attach to the cover stitch. Alright, so that's what I'm going to be using and I will link that down below. There is a, um, I guess you could call it a dupe, um, that is a generic version of this on Amazon. I personally don't, don't have it, but I do believe it works just the same except for the fact that it doesn't hook into your machine. You have to actually tape it to your machine to get it to hook in. So I am not familiar with it, but I've seen videos on other people do it, using it, and it works perfectly. So if you want to save some money there, I think it's like substantially um, less cost but you do have to tape it to your machine or somehow stick it to your machine to get it to stay so let's get started okay so for your pattern pieces you need a front cut on a fold you need one back cut on a fold you need the binding for the hoodie facing you need the binding for the arm facing then you also need the um, waistband cuff here and then you need the hoodie part here two mirrored images for this Okay, so there's my front piece cut on a fold, the back piece cut on a fold. Okay, and then of course you do you need your binding pieces, your hoodie piece, and your two arm pieces here. I do cut mine longer just to make sure that I have enough fabric, and um, this fabric isn't the stretchiest, so I make sure that I have enough. Then this is the waistband cuff cut on a fold, and then you need two of these hoodie pieces, which are mirrored images. Alright, just in case you missed it, I do cut my binding strips um, a tad bit longer just especially if you're practicing and you've never done this before um, but if you're not using the binding attachment and you're doing this binding like the previous methods that I've shown in the other videos of binding um, which is like a faux binding where you attach it with a serger and then you flip it up and then top stitch it down with a cover stitch or a sewing machine you can do that but I'm gonna actually use the binding attachment and I do cut mine longer just because I'm still kind of new doing this and I found that if you're not using like ribbing fabric or something like that you might want to cut them just a tad bit longer because you can always cut off the excess that um, is on either end of your binding so that's what I like to do I explained that a little bit earlier but just in case you missed all right so first thing we're going to do is move all our binding strips out of the way and here is the cuff piece for the bottom and you're going to prepare this just like all the cuffs that I normally do in my videos um, if you wanted to just do this like this, you could sew here and then flip it and, um, you know, do it like that. I like to do the ham hot method. So this is my hamburger fold here. I folded it like this and then I'm going to fold it like this, which is the, um, hot dog method here, or the hot dog fold here. And then I'm just going to grab me a pin. All right. I'm going to grab a pin and just put it right here. So we've got that cuff taken care of, and then you'll just sew or sew this raw edge here. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this hood taken care of. And what you're going to do with the hood is you're going to serge or um, zigzag stitch all the way around the curved part here. So leave that front undone and leave the bottom undone. So you just need to do this curved piece here, this C-shape almost. So that and then move that there. Then you're going to put the front and back right sides together and do the shoulder points here. I'm doing the zero to three month size, so it's really tiny. Um, but you get the gist of it. So just put your shoulder points together here and here. And since we're only adding the binding to the hood, you can go ahead and close both of these. And um, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I have the waistband here which I'm going to go ahead and quarter so I'm going to snip these two points here and then take this pin out flip this cuff out 
match those two snip points up here, match it up with this back seam here, and bam. Find the equal both the points on the sides. Then I have the hood here, which we will add the binding strip to the front facing here. And then I have put these two together here. And they were a little wonky because you have to match them up. It'll look like they don't match up, um, but they do. So like one's, one point's going one way and one point's going the other way. So that's it's a little difficult, especially on these teeny tiny ones because they're so small. But I'm going to go over to the cover stitch and get the binding attachment set up. So let's go do that. All right, so I absolutely recommend you um, cutting some one and a half inch wide strips of fabric to practice this before you just do this on your garment because it does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, but this is what the binding attachment looks like here. All right, and it actually just attaches right here. And then you also have a special foot that you attach as well. So let me grab that. It comes with this um, at least when I bought it on kinsewingcenter.com that is what it came with it came with this and this and a little instruction booklet um, so what you're gonna need to do is remove your foot that's on here so this little lever in the back this little lever back here you do that and then you'll pull the foot off um, of course you could turn the machine off um, if you need to I'm not going to and then I'll just put it under here and then drop your presser foot and then pop that, pull that lever up and it'll pop right in. So lift your press foot up and then I like to make sure that my needles or the thread is underneath, already going through the needle. So I'll pull the, the needles underneath. I just find it, it starts better, not necessarily needed. So I've got that new presser foot on there and now I need to, I don't have to do that. Now I need to pop this in here. And there's this AB thing here and it's supposed to hook up directly with this, um, black arrow I have found that I want it to go a little bit more to the right that AB I want it to be a smidge off um, it may just be my machine but I like the um, stitching to be as close to the binding as possible um, that's just what I found so I push mine back a little bit more um, you'll find your sweet spot on your machine because unfortunately yes they are all manufactured the same but they all have like different variations um, in settings and all of that so because um, sometimes somebody can use the exact same settings I use on the same fabric with their machine and it may not be exactly the same but that's how you get this set up okay so we're gonna do the binding on the hoodie top first so you'll need that long strip that you cut all right and it goes like this show you guys I'm gonna pull you guys closer so you can see this So the fabric will go like this. So you'll want the wrong side facing you, of course. Oop. Wrong side facing you. And then you'll push it down here. And then you'll need some tweezers. Um, and I think these actually came with the machine. I use tweezers, I find it best. And so then you'll poke it in and you want this part right here to go in and in here. And then you'll just kind of pull the fabric through, making sure that it's still catching here and here so you may have to pull it out a little bit and pull it through just like this and it'll poke out right here and then I just use my tweezers to kind of stick it in there and then I'll pull it through some more and then I'll just kind of curl these pieces in and then it creates that binding there so that's where that double fold is right there right in there and that's where you'll stick your fabric in and so I like to just go ahead and push that fabric through and then hopefully you guys can see here how it's kind of coming out here. I'll grab my tweezers and pull it underneath the presser foot. That's just what I found works. Um, I played around with this for a little while and that's just what I found works. So I kind of pull it under my presser foot and I go ahead and put my presser foot down. You want to make sure that your needles are where you want them to be here. And that's pretty much how I get it set up. Okay, so now is the part of getting the fabric into it. So I'm going to sit you guys over here. Hopefully you can see, it's gonna be a little difficult for me to do it um, exactly how I wanna do it. So um, the 
binding is of course going on this front part here, the part that sticks out. So you're gonna want one of these to go in this first. And you're wanting your fabric to be right side up. So remember we put that binding tape, or the binding strip we cut, um, wrong side facing us. And so this one is actually gonna be right side facing up. And so you're gonna wanna, I like to, this is how I like to do it at least, okay? I'm not sure if there's a right, um, or necessarily a wrong way. I mean, I guess there is a wrong way. Um, but th this is where I find that the videos I've watched, um, this binding strip here on the um, generic version of this binding attachment, it has this little um, metal piece that comes off that holds your binding strip up. That's the one thing that I will say that I wish this one did have, especially with it costing so much. It doesn't have that, so it kind of just hangs off over here. And if you're not using a stable fabric, it's kind of difficult um, to keep it. You just have to make sure you're watching it. And it's a little difficult to do, especially if you're learning. That's why I recommend, you know, practicing on a strip first. So I grabbed the end of this fabric here. So that's the end of that binding or the hoodie part. And I kind of just sandwich it in with my tweezers and I'll pull it down as far as I want it to go. Um, if I can get it in there and then I'll hold it okay all right so then what I like to do is like to go ahead and hold my strings here and get started so once I make sure that that needle is going through my binding strip that's when I pay attention to this don't pull too hard and I get it going all right so I've learned to kind of stretch your binding as you go um, just a smidge this is where it gets a little difficult because you want to stretch it just a smidge um, around this edge here. So stretch and sew as you go. Which is another reason why I say um, it's very smart to go ahead and cut this binding strip longer because this part, there's no right formula to know exactly how much to stretch um, for this binding strip because this, although it does add a little bit of tension to your stretching or whatever um, when you're doing it on the um, feed dogs or whatnot that are pulling your fabric through, you do need to add just a teeny bit more stretch to it. It's, what, it's just what I found. Um, if you can say right or wrong, if you're watching this and you know a better way, um, go for that. But this is how I've learned and what's best for me. So what works best for me. All right, so now we're going over that middle seam. And then I kind of just pay attention and see about how long my strip is still and make sure that I have enough strip left. All right, so clearly I have plenty of strip. And then you can just keep going if you want to. Let's see how much binding strip I had left. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. And then this is what this looks like attached to the hoodie part here. All right, and then I do like to cut a smidge of this. I'm gonna have to use the scissors because this little, it's too thick. I'm using French terry fabric, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that in the beginning. Totally just use scissors, but whatever. All right, so I've got that hoodie on there, and I just cut a little bit off of the excess part here. So that's what that hoodie looks like with the binding on it. So it's super simple. Once you get it figured out and get um, figure out how to set your machine up, figure out the sweet spot of where you want to attach the binding attachment, and make sure that it's lining up with your needles. Um, it's fairly simple after that. Just, the tweezers make it so much easier, in my opinion. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do the arm tank binding now. So I'm going to grab my strip. You have two of these arm strips. So again, the binding strip facing you going into this part here. I'm going to make sure that metal part catches. Rewind back to where I showed you a second ago if you are um, still confused. Um, but it's exactly the same as we just did, just with the, this new strip. We want to make sure both of those pieces of fabric go into that metal piece. That's really the most important part. Um, because once you get it in those metal pieces and going good, then you can just pull through here. 
paying attention to making sure it's still going in good. And then once it goes in here, I just kind of push my tweezers in and poke that fabric through. When I get enough that I can pull out here, I just kind of pull it right here. And then once you get it pretty good under here, close to your needles about where you want it to go, I drop my presser foot. Okay, so then, same thing here, we're gonna do the arm part here, the arm side part. So just start on one end, make sure the fabric is facing up, right side facing up, and then just grab your tweezers and kind of pull that fabric into there. And then I just kind of squish it down. All right, and then you get started. I do want to pull our strings here. So once it gets started, that's when I kind of let go of everything and then pay attention to the strip over here. Alright, so I see I have clearly enough strip. This fabric was a lot stretchier than I thought it was going to be, so um, maybe don't cut your binding so much longer. <laughs> Um, but definitely if you're practicing, it's not a bad thing to do. And then I cut leaving a little bit extra on the ends here on both sides. And when I'm stretching the binding, I'm not really stretching it. I'm just kind of adding tension to it. Um, so I'm not like pulling it. Cause if you do that, you're going to start curling your edges up in here and it's going to get a little messed up. So I'm just kind of, um, applying tension to it, I guess you could say. Um, so then there's the tank binding there but this thing makes these look so pretty so it's so worth it um so if you have a cover stitch and you haven't got a binding attachment um go for it go for it the only thing is i don't think you can bind in the round with it that's the only thing um but you can actually stop and then fold your fabric over and like use a sewing machine to top stitch it down if you wanted to i've not done that um but i mean essentially it, it sounds like you could do that <laughs> i haven't done it yet all right, so I'm just putting this in here really fast. Like I said, if you're still a little confused, go back and um, rewind it to the part where I did the neck because I showed you exactly how to put this in here. All right, so once that comes out, I sandwich it and pull it through. All right, and pull it through a little bit more. Okay. Alright, so we'll do this part again. Grab my tweezers, pull this in, fabric right side up, putting the end of the arm side in here, and just squishing it down as far as I want it to go. Um, and then pulling my strings. And once that gets on the binding strip, I just start going. Oh, the fabric's not moving anymore. Let's see. Why is it not moving? pull it there all right once it starts going you're fine and then i'm gonna add a little attention a little tension to this part here and mainly i'm just holding it up but i'm also kind of applying a little attention just a little tension leaving a little bit off on both sides and the binding part is done so I hope you guys found that super simple um, for me it took me a, a couple days um, a little bit of time here and there working on it it took me a couple days to figure it out um, so don't feel bad if you don't figure it out right off the bat um, but the reason why I apply the tension um, and see I didn't do it with too much there so you kind of have that um, foldy Part there so if you're stretching your um, binding more or a little bit more would prevent that kind of folded part there um, so that's the binding part that's pretty much it so now let's go attach this hood and um, do the side seams attach the hood and attach the cuff at the bottom all right so we're back at the serger and we're gonna put these right sides together and do the side seams here so I like to just grab the 
the bottom part here. Well, if I can get it to unfold. So grab your side seam, side seam here, and side seam here, all the way down the sides. I like to start on the bottom just because I like to match up the binding pieces here in a minute. So I'm gonna start on the bottom piece. Surge up, and I'm gonna hold my binding here evenly and then hold the extra bit here the two pieces that I didn't cut off and I'm gonna guide those under the knife and making sure these are still lined up don't cut your fingers and I slow down right there just because it's so easy for these to get like mismatched so then that's what it looks like and I'm gonna cut my tail kind of long I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side start at the bottom all just tips and tricks that I've learned. You do however you want to do it, but this is how I learned and uh, basically taught myself how to do it. And I like the I like the finish. So, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and match this part up. All right. Cut my tail, and then I'm gonna need my knit picker. All right, so these um, pieces here, I'm gonna have to secure because you don't want them to be coming unraveled. So I'm using this knit picker to just pull the tail back through and then cutting off the excess. All right, doing that one more time here. Basically, this thing has a lever. If you're not familiar with my videos, I use this thing to um, pull my serger tails back through. Um, because I found that knotting, burning, tying, whatever you want to do, um, in my opinion, and with my experience with what I did, it didn't work for me. So, I have found the knit picker to be the best way to secure. Um, if you don't have a knit picker, you can use a crochet hook or something of the sort. But the knit picker is what I found to work best for me. And then these little spots right here, when you flip them you can top stitch this seam down like this so you top stitch right here if you wanted to make sure that goes down which i will do off camera with a sewing machine or you can hand stitch that if you even wanted to if you don't have a sewing machine and you want to um top stitch that down just use a sewing machine straight stitch or you can hand stitch that if you want to all right so i'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom because it's super simple so i'm gonna go ahead and side seam to side seam fold it together find the middle and the front here, my front points, front and back, not middle and front, that doesn't make any sense. Back and front piece here. Okay, so then I want my seam of my waistband cuff to go in the back, so I'm paying attention to what the back is. So the back is that razor back part, or razor back, I still don't know how to say that, you guys. Whatever, you know what I mean. Okay. Alright, so... I'm going to go ahead and put the cuff inside the garment like this matching up the back point to the back seam and I'm just gonna keep going around matching up all the four points Okay, and so then I'm just going to sew this on. Removing your pins as you go, of course. I'm just surging around the round part here. your tail here and then the last part here is just adding the hood so I'll tuck that tail so you're just gonna find the front and the back of the um, back and front pieces <laughs> you're gonna find the middle sorry that's what I mean <laughs> 
So you're gonna match up your shoulder points here. And you could have done this when you cut if you wanted to. Um, I like to do it after I've already sewn the pieces together. So I found that middle back. Now I'm gonna find the middle front. Right there. Okay. Because you're gonna match up the front and the back points here. So what I like to do is this is, um, I had a little difficulty with the front of this pattern, so what I like to do is go ahead and mark here. So I'm gonna do about right here, and I'm gonna make a snip here. So that's where I'm gonna overlap those two points. I'm gonna over, overlap, it's about two inches, two and a half inches is what I like to do. Um, and I'm gonna overlap those two pieces there and match up those two points with that middle. And so those two points are gonna go on the middle front here. Um, so that creates that little um, part on the hoodie, as you can see. All right, so here, you're gonna do the, pretty much do this just like a cuff. So this is gonna be right side out. Your hoodie part's gonna be right side out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the hood in to the neck hole. Like this. And I'm gonna match up this back point here. So it's right sides together, pretty much, as you can see. So the right side of the hood is touching the right side of the garment. And I'm matching up this back point here. So that seam is going to be in the middle back, like this. And then I'm gonna grab some more pins and then um, really however you want your hoodie to cross, it's up to you. Um, I just grab a point and then, so I'm gonna match up that one point that I snipped just then, and then I'm gonna grab the other one here, walk it around, and match it up here. So then I have both of those points matched up. So all raw edges are together here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin here so that I don't mess that part up. And then I like to just kind of make sure how this is going and just put a pin just so it doesn't move too much for me on either side here. All right. So I kind of cut these to do this, like an angle, my points of my binding. Um, this is the part that it may look a little wonky, but you can fix after you get through sewing. So I like to just make sure that the whole binding piece is through this part, which is what I like to do. So I'm gonna start right here on the side seam. Hmm. No matter how I do it. Yeah, I'm gonna start right here on the side seam after I move these pins, because that could be dangerous. <laughs> On the shoulder seam here, I'm gonna start right here. And get it going. And then I'm going to make sure that this front piece here is all lined out. Don't overstretch it. It's gonna get a little difficult, especially if you're using a thicker fabric like me, this French Terry. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull. And then this bottom piece, I'm gonna make sure the binding piece here is just matching up. This binding piece here, um, just make sure that the raw edges are still lining up and you're catching all of that binding strip in the seam, because otherwise it'll look really silly if you don't catch all the binding piece. right here is where you would add the tag so you just fold it up and uh, put it in the seam as you go around this is for my son so I'm not adding a tag and then you'll just overlap where you started 
Of course, don't cut into your seam. Overlap, pull it out, and then tuck this tail, and you're done. So, like, it's a super cute pattern that looks super complicated, but with the help of that binding attachment, you can get this done super quick. on the front that's how cute it looks and then um, it's just just really cute <laughs> so let's go see this all completed all right so this thing all sewn up minus top stitching the side seams down or the seams down like I said um, my binding pieces are a little wonky because I didn't stretch um, quite enough but again, that's what I was saying about the, um, stretching. I didn't stretch the arm ones tight enough, but, um, it's still fine. It still looks cute on, and especially when the wearer is wearing it, those will stretch out. Um, you can press those if you wanted to, uh, but this pattern is super cute. You can cover stitch it or top stitch anything else down you want to top stitch down, but that's what it looks like completed. Again, if yours look like mine, it's because you didn't stretch the binding um, enough. That's why it's kind of folded like that. So you need to stretch that binding just a tad bit more. But again, like I said, that's just practicing with your machines. So that's what it looks like all together. I need to press it. There's some wrinkles. But it's super cute. And this is the zero to three month size. Can't wait to put the side in it. Um, but it's super cute. And that's what the little hood looks like on the front there. Super cute little detail there and you can do pockets on it i just did the regular version here so all right hope you guys enjoyed this video we'll see you guys next tuesday bye